Hey, this is Andrew from Noisy, and we are here in beautiful Los Angeles, as you can see. Fountains, people on paddle boats. We meet up with Retox today. See what's up with them, playing a house show tonight. We're gonna check out their practice space. Just see what it's like to be in Retox, the mystery, the intrigue. Hi. Andrew. Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I thought there was a dog in the back, but I <laughs> It's your bass player. <laughs> Thanks for getting me, guys. Yeah, man. Like 249, 250 people coming. They've been like shutting a lot of the like warehouse spots down. Yeah, One of my old like... bands played the show in Santa Barbara at a house and the cops shut it down. So these kids stole the cops' car. No, they yeah, it was fucking crazy. And these two fat cops just running down the street after their car. And they, they, they were gone eventually. The, oh, show, the show continued on. How do we talk? I mean, this is a totally vague question, but how do we talk? How did it come about? Man, I think maybe 18 years ago, I, I played a show with the Crimson Curse, my old band at Zed Records, an awesome place in Long Beach, it's not there anymore, with Mike Crane's band, the Festival of Dead Deer. And I remember seeing the flyer and thinking like, holy crap, that's one of the best band names I've ever heard, the right. Festival of Dead Deer. It's gotta be really, really good. And they they pull up, they're all fucked up on heroin, and they, they, they all look like Spock, you know? And I'm like, all right, dude, <laughs> like we found it. Like, this is gonna be the best. I was already sold before I even heard one note by that right. band. And, and, and essentially that was it. I was like, you know, I became friends with Mike, and then a series of really horrible things happened between the two of us. Not not necessarily directly, but we went down these paths, and shit happened, and we both ended up ended up growing up and becoming who we are. And at one point, we just said, like, dude, let's let's um, start a band. Yeah. So you're from you're from Southern California. I grew up out here. I, I moved out here with my parents. This area has definitely fucking changed. Yeah. Definitely. What it used to be like? Just a wasteland. Yeah. Just like an old, burned out industrial wasteland with fucking packs of wild dogs running around. No one believes me, but there used to be so many packs of wild dogs down here. I had a girlfriend who lived in this studio over here, and I remember one night she was like, We, we need beer. Like, I dare you to go to this, go walk to this bar and get it. And I was like, I was, I was, I was really fucked up anyways. I was super high. I was like, I'll do it. And I remember I ran, literally ran as fast as I could and, and pretty much got attacked twice in one run to the store and back. And dudes coming after me, coming, like coming out of the shadows and coming after me. It was so fucked up. But I made it, I made it back. <laughs> she was stoked, she couldn't believe it. You have the sellers on the crash crash hats. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then people think I'm a fucking genius. So you play in a praise band? A praise band? I, I definitely could play a shout chorus too. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> yep. It's the same thing with a punk band. It's just a little different. Uh, guitar, whatever these assholes do with their stringed instruments. I don't, I don't fuck with notes, man. I'm, a, I'm more of a caveman. I don't play notes. See it. Records on Epitaph. We always had a good relationship with yeah. Fred Gerwitz. Yeah. It's always. I love that dude. Yeah. It was a complete trip when the Locust put out like soundscapes on Epitaph when the like when the locust first started, you know, we could only put out shit on smaller labels. And then the world changed and was like, hey, there's this bigger label, still an independent label, still fits into our political agenda. It was like, we'll give you more money to actually record a record in a studio and, and to and to have proper promotion. Why would we not? Yeah, why would you not do that? The world is changing and they're accepting that and so fuck yeah I wanna put out I wanna put out a rat sign record, not a piece of shit again. I well, hope they're doing a good job setting up my shit. <laughs> I really do. Or what, dude? My shit's not even set up yet. What the fuck, dude? I showed you how to do it first time. <laughs> Word's so dumb, but lifers. Oh, yeah, I'm a lifer. You know, the only time you can call yourself a lifer is when you're 70 and you're about to die. Yes. Beatles is a perfect example. John Lennon, 
lifer. I mean, right. fucking was bad, just a, one of the ultimate badasses. Think of Paul McCartney, and it's like, okay, I think he was a lifer. But then, like, all of a sudden, he, like, did that record with the bloody beetroots. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Tom so Waits. Yeah. Tom Waits, definitely a lifer. Saw him in Mission Beach, like, on the boardwalk playing his guitar. I actually didn't even think it was him. It looked like a homeless man playing his guitar. No one had a clue who he was. Yeah. I actually didn't even think it was him. I was like, this is fucking gotta be someone else. It was, it was him though. reasons are for playing music for me it was also escape like I wanted to I wanted to escape all of this it's like I, I just here you're free and it's fucking fun and you can be loud and you you can expel everything that that is uh, well for me you know tormenting me does that answer your question yeah, totally, totally <laughs> I, don't think I, I don't think I answered your question Cooking, yeah, cooking meth. Yeah. Cooking meth. Here, downtown Skid Row. Making meth, going to punk shows. Right? <laughs> 